Is the triple A gaming civil watch starting? One can only hope. So amidst the landscape where a lot of triple A publishers and their executives seem to lean towards the worst trends and habits possible, where it's making the games industry kind of unsustainable in the way they're approaching games. Say it, Young. Say it. DEI and Woke. Say the words. Game development and the way they're just ballooning to a point where there's just no way this can continue in a way that can maintain itself for the long term. It's good to see some developers speak out with just some sense and some perspective and some long-term outlook on how the games industry should navigate itself to just be better not only whatever this is it's not even remotely that deep please stop only in its ability to be sustainable but also just to make better products that come from the right place and in turn sort of advance what the medium is capable of so i want to present three develop so i want to present three major developers who spoke up about the current state of <laughs> he missed it then <laughs> That's funny. The games industry, starting with Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 developer, or more specifically, Sabre Chief Creative Officer Tim Willits. Sabre being the developer behind Warhammer 40k Space Marines 2, which was this... I keep saying Space Marines. It's just singular Space Marine, but either way. This was a highly successful single-player, almost like old-school style game that was like a 10 to 12 hour long campaign with some multiplayer features that weren't monetized to hell. It was almost like what... Sorry, old-school type of campaign game? Well, it's just a game. It's just a game. It's a normal game. At this stage of history can be considered a classic style video game, but one that was done with modern sensibilities. And it went on to do really, really well. I'm feeling there's a, a lot of beating around the bush here. It didn't sell GTA 5 numbers or whatever, but it sold a couple million and it made its money back because it had a reasonable budget. It wasn't bloated in, in its goals and it was just... Maybe. It just wasn't fucking woke and infested with DI and modernisms. Maybe that had a part to play in it, huh? Maybe? Just a simple video game with a very specific goal that did a couple of things really well and really just kind of established the Warhammer identity and ran with it without trying to think about engagement or whatever. They just thought about what's the most fun Warhammer game we can make here, and they did. And so... Without female custodies. That well, seems about right. This right here was in response to Tim Sweeney having said that there's just been this generational change that has led to some games failing to sell as well as the publishers had hoped for. He said one of the manifestations of that change we're seeing right now is that a lot of games are released with high budgets and they're not selling nearly as well as expected, whereas other games are going incredibly strong. What we're seeing is a real trend where players are gravitating towards a really big games where they can play with more of their friends. This feels like a low-key dig at single-player games where he's saying that people want to play with others, but that's not necessarily the case. I mean, yes. Um... Pretty sure almost no one thought that, but okay. Space Marine 2 does have uh, multiplayer components, but it's not its primary way of playing. It is, at its core, a single-player experience with multiplayer components. I played it completely single-player and had a great time, and a lot of people did as well. And so speaking to IGN, Willits, the developer from Saber, said that the problem isn't necessarily that AAA games are too long or take too long to develop and thus launch into already abandoned genres. Rather, AAA developers are, are tending to overscope their games, which in turn means they fail to do any one thing brilliantly. <laughs> yeah, Concord cost 400 million and did nothing but insert politics. I mean, they're not failing to insert modern day politics and garbage into games. That's That's what they're really good at. Now, the problem is that doesn't sell now, does it? They spread themselves too thin. They want to be a jack of all trades instead of a master of one or a couple things. He specifically said, here's the exact quote, is not necessarily the genre that has moved on because great games will always do well. One of the things that we try to do at Saber, and this is part, part of my job is... Yes, that's exactly, by the way, right. 
You can literally start making a game five years after the boom of some kind of genre, and ten years later you can finish it, and bam, people are gonna play it because it's good. That's just how it works, honestly. If it's good, people play it, people watch it, people like it. If it's bad, well, I guess the opposite. As creative officer of all teams, we have a core belief that what you do every second and what happens when you push these buttons and that core gameplay loop is so critical. So we focus on the moment-to-moment -moment interaction, the gameplay, and the feeling you have. And that's the thing about Space Marine 2. And I know this is a memeable quote, but you really do feel like a Space Marine. Like what that power fantasy feels like, they capture that so well. And they didn't go crazy with like skill trees and whatever. Like the gameplay overall is simple. The progression is simple, but they may. Hey, if it had a bigger skill tree, people would be more happy, honestly, but that's okay. Made the campaign just the right amount of length to justify that simplicity. And within that simplicity was a complex feeling of like, this is what it's like to have that power fantasy of donning this armor and being a part of this uh, group, you know, and, 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 you know, fighting for the emperor and, and whatnot. And I mean, there are those missions when you put on that freaking. Is it me or does, or do you also think that Young is kind of really trying to sell home the idea that, yeah, space pudding too, I like the game. You slayed zergs and stuff. It really masculine and manly. <laughs> I almost have a feeling like that. It, it seems like he's trying so hard to just try and call Space Marine 2 good. And that's kind of really, really unlikable jetpack and suddenly your whole world opens up and you feel that you, you shouldn't need to do that much and try that hard to sell space marine 2 as a great game okay no one's gonna question you did you like it did you not or anything if you just say yeah space marine 2 kicks ass you get to play as a giant killing aliens 10 out of 10 would would buy that much more powerful um but you're still vulnerable enough where the game does present a challenge but if you if you get those gameplay mechanics and you execute on them correctly you are just on it you know you're you're locked in and you're slaying uh monsters and tyranids left and right and it's just he, he used the game revert locked in it's a great feeling okay i believe yong has played space marine 2 but the way he's just talking about it seems so awkward. He continues, and then we adhere to our core pillars, like be the ultimate space marine, melee, range, swarms, that's it. You know, that, like they just had this very specific thing they wanted to achieve, this very specific feeling they wanted to evoke. The game is called Space Marine, so it's all about being a space marine. And they didn't focus on how do we make space marine engaging or monetizable. How do we make space marine in space? <laughs> They just said, what is the most fun thing we can do with players inhabiting the shoes of a space marine? And that's what made this game, you know, do so well. It's what spread word of mouth. It's what garnered it great critical reception. They took those specific things and just really focused on it and executed on it really, really well. And a lot of teams throughout development will overscope games, says Willits here. They look at some other game that just came out and say, oh, we got to do that. Oh, by the way, to put this, but to put this into context. Space Marine 2 comes out, absolutely destroys. People are hailing it as a great game. People love it. People don't have complaints about it. And people are saying, yeah, this feels like a 40k thing, for sure. And Amazon is like, yeah, you see this thing that was extremely successful and people love it because it's reliable to the source, that it uh, respects the source material. Yeah, how about that Henry Cavill universe uh, of Warhammer 40k but he says he's going to do the same? Yeah, how about we fuck that? Yeah, how about we just get rid of that because uh, female custodies and whatnots, sisters of whatever? Oh, no, 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 no. Those women that already exist in the thing where we need to complain about women not existing even though they do exist, they don't, they don't matter, okay? The Emperor was secretly non-binary, okay? The Lost Primarchs. Bruh. Trans women. I mean, trans. No, which ones would be more inclusive? Whatever! Trans something. There we go. Bam. 10 out of 10. And let's add this. We gotta do this. And they lose focus on...
By the way, seriously, is any is anyone worried that the Games Workshop is just gonna go and be like, yeah, the Lost Primarchs, they're women, yeah, they they were, they were, and there you go, bot hammer boys, it's ruined. <laughs> I really have a very, very strong fear that that could honestly be it at one point. On the core, what actually makes the game fun. Thank you. We're not in Space Marine 2 doing things that, well, the swarms are new technology, but there isn't some revolutionary new gameplay mechanic that no one's ever seen before. There are gameplay mechanics that people are familiar with, but we do it really, really well, and we execute really, really well, and they do it with their own unique flavor that comes from the love of Warhammer and the the specific feeling they're trying to achieve with Space Marine. There's just a focus and, and, and like a very specific intention with this game. And they didn't have to break the bank to make a game like this because they kept their scope within a reasonable range. So for example, the budget for Space Marine 2 was half. You know what they did with Space Marine 2? They didn't waste literally 20 million on some kind of rando actress or actor who they can uh, use as a uh, a tool to create the character and every company is just wasting literally millions and, and trying to capture real life people it's so stupid and redundant it's completely unnecessary well, well what do you what do these people honestly think and i struggle to call them people honestly at this point that we're not gonna be able to like a main character if He's not a photocopy of fucking Robert Downey Jr. or something? Is that what they think? Because this is so unnecessary, it's insane. That of Doom Eternal, the last game that Willits worked on while boss of its software before leaving to join Saber in 2019, which is kind of crazy to me, because uh, Warhammer feels like weirdly like an expensive game, but then you look at its length and... Uh, the fact that it does ultimately have a reasonable scope, and I guess it makes sense that it's not even as expensive as Doom Eternal. Only half of Doom Eternal, I didn't expect that. Um, but yeah, and, and so like it sold a couple millions, um, but it didn't have to sell a bajillion for it to like break even. You know, it just had to do decent, and it did more than decent. It actually did really well. And so it made the profit margins were substantial. Uh, Will it said right here, we don't need to sell 4 million units to make it a success. Yeah, imagine that they didn't have to hire Sweet Baby Inc. for 50 million and then uh, make them ruin their game. What an absolute surprise how these things turn out. There are many games, sadly, especially out of North American developers, where if you do not sell 5 million copies, you are a failure. I mean, what business are we in where you fail if you sell less than 5 million? Uh, he continued, there are examples like that, and we do not want to be that business. We want to be a developer that focuses on the core experience, what makes the games actually fun, and then do it really well, and then make it affordably. Uh, I mean... Now, the crazy thing about these statements is, is the fact... That the next time they need funding, there is a chance that someone's gonna be like, Ooh, we don't like your statements about trying to make a fun game. A game needs to be a political message. And then they uh, then they get fucked because of it. Yeah. that That is a fear that I honestly have when it comes to things like this and games requesting for funding or investment. You look at Square Enix and their expectations on, you know, how many units they have to sell... Uh, for stuff like Final Fantasy VII, the, the remake entries to be successful or to be deemed financially successful, Final Fantasy XVI, that is just over scope. Bro, what, what wasn't Square Enix's expectations for that, like literally 7 million or something ridiculous like that? Scoping right there, you look at recent Ubisoft games, um, aside from the fact that sales have kind of started to diminish, uh, the, the games that they... Yeah, except the fact that sales have diminished for Ubisoft. Gee, I wonder why, Young. I wonder why. Make are so bloated and, and just so uh, bloated. Just, uh, kind of out of control in scope and the budget. Bro, he's really, he, he knows folk exists. He knows DI is a problem. And yet, he will do everything to just skin around these words and just pretend that they don't exist. It's insane. How? 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 Well, it's called the positive grift, you know? You you can call people negative grift. Hey, if you want to call me a grifter, go ahead. I have literally no problems with it. But 
there, there are so many grifters like Yong. We have Yong, Juicehead, Stevens, whatever his name is. There, there are so many that are just positive grifting. Oh, this game didn't sell so well. Well, I'm not going to say anything bad about it anyway. It was pure shit, but I'm just going to say it wasn't everyone's cup of tea. The, the positive sh sellout grift is just so insane. They must be making bank, okay? These people must be making bank. So much bank that they are so afraid of losing it. Because if the moment they, they are not positive about something, they, it's just all gone. Man, it's insane. That the number of units they have to sell to kind of make it not a disappointment has become less and less tenable. Now, you do have projects like Baldur's Gate 3, which were significant in their budget. That was not like a Space Marine 2 kind of budget. Baldur's Gate 3 was a AAA development project, but it had the D&D name behind it, and it had the benefit of a creative team that... Yeah, I'm sure the D&D &D name behind Baldur's Gate 3 was what made it successful, Young. I'm so sure that that's what made Baldur's Gate 3 successful. Oh! How would I ever doubt that statement? Genuinely set out to make the most fun RPG possible. They weren't focused on what do we do to make it the most, you know, engaging for monetization. Again, all those like bad habits that AAA companies tend to lean on. They really made something so just full of substance and heart. They made something with such pure intent and focus. They really set out to create like the ultimate Dungeons and Dragons video game experience. And they executed on it so well that the praise that it garnered just spread like wildfire and the game's numbers just continued to balloon, not only during early access, but also after- How much did Baldur's Gate 3 sell and then 20 million copies or something? Probably more. Launch and the fact that the- And then they got the Xbox deal that probably gave them, you know, I would assume like 10 more million in the pocket. So, well, probably not 10 more million, but multiple more millions, I would assume an Xbox deal like that would be. Early access, they took feedback from players and used that to better the game. It's like the process of that. While this was a risky venture because of how much money they put into this, they actually did it right. Next developer I want to highlight. Okay, Baldur's Gate was not a risky venture, okay? Baldur's Gate 3 was all or nothing. Uh, Swen, the uh, CEO of Larian, said that, Oh, if Baldur's 3 was a flop and no one bought it, that's it, studio closed down. We're, we're over. There's, there's no recovery from this. ...who spoke out about the current state of the game's industry is Metaphor Reef Atazio's director, Katsura Hashino. For those who don't know, this is basically fantasy persona, but even that seems... This is literally persona, but with different characters and different, well characters pretty much yeah that's that's kind of it and the, even the characters aren't that different and you know what no one gives a shit it's absolutely awesome because it's fucking persona okay persona 5 was beautiful majestic and i i want the waifu pillow okay okay who, who who's your waifu uh waifu choice of persona okay I, I, I feel a lot of, fun, uh, what's her name, Funaba, Futana, what, what's her name, you know, you know, uh, there's so many options. Now, honestly, at the end of the day, I, I'm, I'm a lot, like an original fan, so you know who I'm going to pick at the end of the day, or her sister. Oh, anyway, but what, I don't remember what we were actually talking about. Persona is great, short answer. And more things that are like Persona? Sign me up, Chief. You literally can never have enough of it. It's reductive. It really does take the formula that Persona established and really takes it to the next level. And this game has garnered all... It doesn't. It doesn't in the slightest. It is literally Persona, but reskinned. Okay? Again, we don't need to take anything to the next level. We just need to take something that we already have and make it good. Hard to imagine, Young. All kinds of praise. A lot of people are saying it's game of the year contender. I just started playing it myself and already I'm having a blast. I love the setting. The oh, the game of the year is going to be so fucked because they're trying to ditch uh, Black Myth Wukong. They're trying to ditch Space Marine 2 from it. And there was one other game, I think, that they are trying to get rid of uh, Game of the Year awards because it's not politically correct enough. 
presentation, the music, uh, the you know the the battle systems and the evolution of the JRPG mechanics uh, that we're seeing here. While talking, there's no evolution, Young. There's it's literally a reskin of Persona Five, and everyone's fine with that. There is literally no evolution. You don't even have actually different stats. They're just named differently now. Talking about Persona and the inspiration behind making those games, he talked about how these characters, and you know, same with like metaphor characters, they're facing anxiety and all these other big things that affect everybody that are relatable, no matter who they are, where they are, or how old they are. And then he added, I feel like if you have these super highly polished games that look like they were designed by a bunch of people in a CEO boardroom, that doesn't really excite me. It doesn't really interest me. And one of the unique things about Persona is its aesthetic. It's a style that is so quintessential to Atlas. And it's one of those things you cannot replicate I guess. by having CEOs in a boardroom say what they think a game should look like. This comes from like an artist's point of view. They have something to say with not just the- Oh, shut the fuck up, the this is okay. All I care about the, is the fact that there's a lot of Persona 5 hentai, and I'm very down for it, okay? I'm not gonna lie, boys. You, you know what's up, and I know you're the same, okay? Eh, it's all fine, okay? Uh, the storytelling but also the visuals which in themselves are their own form of storytelling and the fact that they managed to output a game like metaphor and it sold really well i mean it, it's it might actually be the fastest selling atlas game uh it sold a million as much as i know maybe that is actually true something that definitely actually is helping them in this regard though i don't think it's helping it that much because i think it's just word of mouth that the game is awesome because when i first uh, heard about this i was like who the fuck were atlas again kind of rings a bell but i don't remember why yeah i don't think people even remember that the, uh, this was made by the same people i don't think they really do i think it's just positive word of mouth and there you go units in a day that's more than persona games have done in the past and so you can see and the thing that uh potentially i think helped was the memes because dude, remember when persona 5 hit and all of the you see them come those memes oh they were so good i liked them so fucking much honestly they were some of my favorite they were absolutely amazing i love them so much oh Man, th those Persona 5 memes, bring them back. I, I, I endorse it. Bring it back. I love them. Atlas sticking to their guns, sticking to... Also, some of the Persona 5 soundtracks were absolutely amazing. Uh, what's that one called? I even downloaded it. Uh, the Desert Theme Song in the Pyramid? What was it called? I don't remember. I don't, I don't know, but, you know, Persona 5 Desert Theme Song... Go listen to it. It's really good. To their identity, sticking to what they do well, evolving on that formula, and slowly but surely, the traction that their new releases gain continues to grow. And uh, we're seeing them really just kind of uh, flourish as a developer who uh, know uh, who they are and the kinds of games they like to make and what kinds of games they're really masters at. You think he has a script? The way that he looks in front of the PC honestly feels like he has a script. Um, while still not being stale, while still evolving the formula. And trying you, can, you, you can tell that he's looking somewhere like this, not at the camera. There's a difference. But do you think he has a script? Things like a whole new fantasy genre style game that is... I mean, if you're going to talk like this, you should have a script because it's way too cohesive to not, uh, to not be a script. It's very different per from Persona in a lot of ways. And they kept their budget reasonable. They didn't go insane with the scope of the game. Even though it is like a 100 plus hour game, they still managed to make it in like a decently timely manner. And uh, they managed to make it in such a way where selling a couple million units can be deemed a financial success. Unlike, say, again, like Square Enix, where a couple million units is just not enough for them anymore to make money. Uh, so that It is enough for Square Enix to That's not fucking. The reason Square Enix wants more copies sold is because their expectations are higher because they have put in more money and they need more uh, more returns on investment and things like that. So uh, the stock prices go up and things like that happen. That's why Square Enix needs higher sales. That's all the right ideas, but the whole notion of like, you know, 
you, you can't make something exciting with CEOs looking at market research and all these things. You know, art comes really from the heart. Uh, fun is something you have to feel. It's not something you can calculate. You know what I mean? It's just something you have to have. With the penis. Uh, an idea, an exciting idea for, and then execute on as an artist, not as a fucking glorified accountant. And then we have finally Sean Layden, former uh, PlayStation CEO, former PlayStation boss, uh, who kind of talked about the way the double A genre of games is starting to disappear and how that's kind of a threat to gaming, to the games industry. The double A gaming genre is still here and pretty active. There's a lot of really, really good games currently that, uh, that have like, you know, only a couple of millions in budgets, you know, maybe a couple of 10 million in budget. And they are double A, but they are absolutely great. That double A industry is not going anywhere. History Out Untold, for example, I think is uh, considered a double A production. Not 100% sure about that, but maybe it is. Maybe it is triple A. But I think that counts as the double A. Again, could be wrong here. Everything that Hooded Horse releases is double A, not triple A quality. Larion technically was a double A studio, I think, when they, rele uh, when they released Baldur's Gate 3, and only now they're kind of considered a triple A studio, I think. Could be wrong about that one also. But I would say there's a huge difference between tri what we think as triple A and what what is actually double A. And why that is detrimental to the future, as transcribed here by GamesIndustry.biz. This is a conversation that Sean Layden had with Raw Fury co-founder and chief publishing officer Gordon Van Dyke. He had this to say, in the past, we spent a lot more time looking at games and not asking, what's your monetization scheme? Or what's your recurrent revenue plan? Or what's your subscription formula? All these are now part of, like, pitches for major AAA publishers that just weren't. Yeah, yeah. But these pitches don't mean the game is going to be bad, okay? This is something that people, I feel, really, really misunderstand off, uh, often because they just don't get it. These triple A, a uh, not... These these triple A publishers and publishers in general, they're not exactly gonna uh, go he hear someone out with their game sale and say, okay, okay, you have all the monetization that we want, you have skins and whatnot, but how about making the game verse and story verse just because why not? No one does that. They they just kind of care about the monetization. And, well, maybe if they are something like EA, they, they care about inserting Vogue shit in the game. But other than that, the they, publishers are typically not really the ones that often that make the game bad. One of the big things that we never talk about is the actual job of a CEO. And the actual job of a CEO in situations like this is convincing the AAA publisher or publisher in general that whatever the fuck system that they have is good enough and they need to keep it because the game is going to be better with it and that the monetization can be a completely separate thing and still keep the game good and not comply with any, any garbage that the publisher wants you to put in because they think that's a success. That is one of the jobs that the CEO must actually do. But other than that, the CEO is not going to tell you to make the inventory system fucking trash or the gameplay boring like in Star Wars Outlaws. That's the developer's fault, not the CEO's. Once upon a time, before we asked the simple question, is it fun? Are we having a good time? If you said yes to those questions, you'd usually get a green light. You didn't worry so much about the end piece for better or for worse. Of course, back then you didn't make a game for millions of dollars, so your risk tolerance was fairly high, but you know, Publishers were also more tolerant to those kinds of games that weren't ridiculous in their budget, but now everything has to be super high budget to keep up with uh, certain trends and the like. And, and it's like, we got to like chill the fuck out as the, uh, as a games industry. That's why like when I released my review of Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2, the title of that video for me was, we need more games like this. Not everything has to be... Yeah, and that video almost seemed like you honestly didn't play it, and I don't know how you fucking do that. Anyway, Young, uh, that's it. That was Young, and to be further yeah. Updated on all further things, updated, gaming, news, Young, reviews, Young. And discussions. Stay tuned right here right on here Young, 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 yeah. yeah. I'll Young. see you guys next time. Young, Young, Young out. Yeah.
Beautiful, beautiful, isn't it? Anyway, this is Quizzer Sitsin. Bye!